Put your hands up here on the car. Up on the car. No, don't put them in your pockets. Hands up on the car. There you go. Right there. So I came in here to make a review of the new boots that Santa got me for Christmas. I got some Danner Torrent GTXs, which is one of my favorite types of boots to use for police work. Now I could talk about how the Danner Torrent GTXs are great because they have nylon on the side, which allows you to stay cool in the summer, but they have a Gore-Tex liner, which keeps your feet dry even when it's really wet out. So you kind of get that, that great in-between between waterproofness and breathability, which is really important in how they have enough stiffness in the ankles so that you have ankle support and an actual boot level of protectiveness without being overtly heavy like my Danner Acadia's, my Bates Durasock shocks have been. But then I realized I bought the same boots that I've been using before, so why do a review of my brand new boots when what people really want to see is what the things look like after a couple of years and me beating the crap out of them. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. I'm going to bring you guys in a little bit and we are going to take a good hard look at what's left of Danner Torrent GTX's after a couple of years of use. Now I haven't glued any of this down. The stitching is all still in place along the edges of both boots. This stitching right there. The sole of the boot is not delaminating from the rest of it. You can see along the edge there, I haven't glued any of this down. The lining inside the boot is still pretty well all there. It's not uh, frayed and destroyed. There's no plastic sticking through. In fact, the label here is still pretty much the way it was when I bought them. And the only reason I'm replacing these with a new pair of the exact same boot is that the heel on this one and on the other of its uh, matching pair there is completely gone. Now because their heels are completely worn down from walking on concrete all day, I have to replace these things. But quite frankly, I've been so happy with them I bought a new pair just like them. Now the reason I've been so happy with them is because the area that I work in very frequently floods. Here, we'll look at the other boot here for a second. The area I work in very frequently floods, and these have a Gore-Tex boot, and then up the first six inches of this boot, you can see here, is a little gusset there. So the Gore-Tex liner doesn't end where the tongue starts like it does in a lot of cheaper boots. Also, they have these metal speed laces. Well, they're not the clips that I'm used to from hiking boots from back in the day. Still work really well for allowing you to lace up quickly without having to create a little hook that hooks on to things when you're at work and bends them all out of shape and breaks them, which is a problem with using hiking boots for police work when you're inside houses. You end up backing up a lot into things and ripping the little clips off, which uh, the Danner solution to this with these metal rings that the laces slide through is really good on. The only thing I've had to replace on these is the shoe laces, but that's pretty normal for any work boot when you use it for a couple of years. The toes are still in good shape, and you can see how the toe box is pretty strong still after a couple of years and pretty protective. It's, it's taken a lot of wear and tear over the years of kicking things and jumping over fences and going through backyards and high grass and stuff, but it's still kept its protective properties for me. And then the side here with the nylon is really nice because it allows the boot to breathe. It allows that Gore-Tex membrane to do its job. When you have a full leather boot, the Gore-Tex membrane is kind of uh, superfluous in my book because you can waterproof the leather on the outside of the boot and as long as it stays in one piece, it's gonna stay pretty waterproof. The problem with that is once water gets in, it's hard for it to get back out. With a Gore-Tex boot, that is a leather front protection and nylon along the sides. It allows the water to get out once it's gotten in, kind of like leaving a drain hole at the bottom of a windowsill. You don't want your windows on your house to be completely sealed because once you get water in, the stuff never cuts out, it pools. And with duty boots, you want the water, if it does get in, to be able to get out and dry out eventually. And with the Gore-Tex liner, it doesn't matter if the water gets in, your feet might get a little cold, but if the water isn't directly on your feet, at least they're not wet. And that helps a lot with the perceived level of warmth that you have going on. Of course, I don't use these boots in the winter time, in the deep winter at least. I still use my Bates Durashocks, which have like 600 grams of insulation, which are great for when it's below zero out. But three seasons out of the year and well into winter, this is what I use, and that's why I bought a whole new pair.
This is the new pair. This is how they come packaged from Danner. When they're brand new, this uh, this toe here is very shinable. This is how it comes from the factory. It comes with kind of a, a matte finish. I wish I could keep that matte finish looking that cool and matte finish for the two years that I have it, but unfortunately wear and tear being what it is, it's just the how, uh, how the cookie crumbles. They end up getting scratched up and then you have to go to a gloss finish to try to cover the scratches and stuff. But I still think that uh, even after a year of use, from a couple feet away, most people really can't tell the difference. We have to get up really close before we can start seeing which boot is new and which boot is old. You can see on the heels here what the old one looks like and what the new air torrent looks like. I really like this pattern because it's got a lot of grip, a lot of grab on the back end for when you're going downhill and a lot of grab on this front toe when you dig your toe in for going uphill, which is really nice if you're in an area with a lot of mud or a lot of wet muck. If there's any type of grass at all, something to catch on to, you can normally catch it with the front toe of the boot. You can see where this has gone over the last two years for me. So since people are constantly asking me to do a boot review, this is it. This is the best pair of duty boots I have found thus far for police work. I'm very happy with them. And if you're looking for a good pair of duty boots for police work, if you're just getting into police work, you're gonna be in an outdoor environment where you're gonna be in the snow and the slush and the rain until it gets down below zero. This is a really good option for duty boots that you should look at. Until, ne until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. I'd like to thank all the Patreon supporters and especially the shift supervisor level Patreon supporters that we have listed here. Your contributions are what allows free field training to continue on and become better. Thank you. Drop the gun now! Where are you going? Get out of the-